It's Wednesday, April 10. We have lots to tell you today. Close to $17 million in presidential grants has been presented to Santa Rosa and its satellite communities in the Maruca Subdistrict Region 1. Santa Rosa is the largest indigenous village in Guyana with a population of over 10,000. Trina visited the village over the weekend. Minister of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, Sidney Alicock, presented the 2019 grants to 11 satellite villages spread across the subdistrict. Koko Hutawari, Cabrora, and Rincon received $3 million each, Hurodaya, $1 million, Kamwata, $1 million, Karaburi, $1 million, Walaba, $1 million, Waramuri, $800,000, Parakis, $1 million, Mora, $1 million, and Kumaka, $1 million. Parakis Village used its funds to purchase carpentry and boat building tools and sports gear. Senior Councillor Terence Edwards explained that the remaining funds will be used to commence a training workshop in boat building. As we know, in fact, youths are string, and we need to get them back into the fold. So that's why they decided to embark on this program for them in sports, boat building, house building, furniture making, in order so they could make something for themselves. Minister Alicock commended the village council for creating projects that target the young people in the village. He said it serves as motivation for the young people who are willing to learn a skill and help with the development of their respective villages. In Parakis or in, the, the, in this part of Region 1, Moruka Subdistrict, we're very happy to see the enthusiasm of like the councillors, the two shows, the elders here, willing to teach, willing to be part of the development of youths through sports. The presidential grants program is aimed at creating self-sufficiency within the hinterland villages and communities through green innovative projects. This year, over $200 million will be invested in 215 villages and communities under the program. For InfoHub, Stacey Carmichael. In keeping with the coalition government's plans to transform Guyana into a green economy, as outlined in the Green State Development Strategy, the Ministry of Public Infrastructure has signed a Solar System Memorandum of Understanding. Representative of the Organization of American States, OAS, Jean de Moore, focused on the significance this MOU means not only to Guyana, but the wider region. I hope this model partnership and pilot project will spread even beyond Guyana shores. As it spread, we contribute to contain climate change, thus preserving the environment of our region and the planet for the well-being of the next generation. Minister of Public Infrastructure David Patterson reiterated the government's commitment towards going green. When, we, when this administration took, um, came to office about four years ago, renewable energy in Guyana was one single project, the Myla Falls Hydro. And we have moved in leaps and bounds. This is just another step in that pathway. Chief Executive Officer for Guyana Power and Light, Albert Gordon, stressed the importance of a renewable energy project of this kind. We'll have broadband capability which would make available to facilitate um, customers being able to, to do more creative things, to better manage, as Devon said, to democratize the, their usage of energy so they have more control over it. The Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture, CARICOM and the Ministry of Agriculture are also partnering to ensure the execution of the solar system project. Reporting from the Minister's boardroom at the Ministry of Public Infrastructure with videographer Joanne Jordan, Shaquille Bourne for InfoHub. To raise awareness and up the number of forestry-based legal operations, the Environmental Protection Agency, through the FAO EU Forest Law Enforcement Governance Trade Program, has embarked on a series of workshops to better inform owners on the process of becoming authorized. 
We're here at the Guyana Forestry Commission's Yarrow Training Center, where a number of community forest organizations are undergoing training from the Environmental Protection Agency in how they can go about receiving their environmental authorizations. We have a fusion of Regions 3, um, CFOs from Regions 3 and 4, participating in this workshop and it actually familiarized them with not only the work of the Environmental Protection Agency but more so educated them on the process and the procedure as it relates to applying for an environmental authorization. So ultimately the goal of this project or of this program is to equip CFOs with the requisite knowledge and skills that they need to become authorized and remain compliant. Many of the persons present were extremely happy to attend the workshop, especially Gilbert George, who was never really a fan of these workshops to begin with. This workshop was a difference. You know, it tells us about the environment, protecting the environment, environment and how we could sustain it for the future generation, which is very good. And it also tells us that how we could keep working and building with the environment and build ourselves as a community and as a group. The project has so far been extremely impactful, helping hundreds of participants to be able to properly register for environmental authorization. We are targeting six to nine community forest organizations. So far we would have, uh, have workshop with 37 of them and uh, we held with this recently concluded workshop, work, workshop, it would have been 10. So far, we, are, we were able to meet with 264 participants, and we expect to meet with another 60 from the other two workshops we have planned. To wrap up the training, participants were taken to a sawmill within the vicinity and briefed on how to use the various equipment used by the EPA to carry out their site checks. Today's participants were given an opportunity to shadow the Environmental Protection Agency as they perform a mock exercise around this particular sawmill, testing the various things that they look for during an inspection. With videographer Kareem Peters, I'm Nikosi Bruce for InfoHub. Stakeholders were urged to be more active as measures are being taken to complete the final draft of the National Climate Change Policy and Action Plan. The fourth engagement held at Carroll Lodge was aimed at adjusting the draft produced from previous consultations. During the workshop, participants discussed the national goals for climate change. Project consultant Dr. Callum Shaw stated as Guyana moves towards implementing a climate change strategy, there needs to be engagements on all levels from both the public and private sectors. We want things to be working in parallel. Uh, we want building of resources and capacities and different kinds of capital to tackle climate change. So we do need to have that sort of unifying approach. And again, this is what the policy does. Head of the Office for Climate Change, Janelle Christian. We need to take stock to ensure that those things that we are already doing well, that it is not just in an informal way, that, but it become ingrained in our policy. Recognizing that there are some things that we need to do that we probably are not doing, then we need to ensure that the policies speak to it. And to ensure that action is taken across all of government, horizontally and vertically, way down to the community level. Guyana's climate change policy integrates the socio-economic and environmental challenges of climate change into national sustainable development planning that generates strategic actions at all levels for adaptation, mitigation and resilience. Still to come, Education Ministry continues to hold NGSA Mad Camps countrywide and first ever youth employment drive to be hosted. Details of these and more when we return. Are you ready to embark on a truly epic adventure to an undiscovered corner of South America, where some of the most spectacular natural attractions are unveiled within a beautifully diverse landscape? From the wetlands and savannas to the ancient mountains, magnificent waterways, and lush and enriching rainforest would provide a vast playground for some of the most exotic and breathtaking creatures on the planet, including many of the world's giant species. This untouched land of mystery and wonder serves up an exclusive experience for travelers. 
So are you ready for a new, awe-inspiring adventure? Welcome back to nature. Welcome to Diana. Welcome back. In its bid to improve the performance in mathematics at the national grade 6 assessment level, the Ministry of Education's mathematics camps have been operational in several schools across Guyana. In the lead up to this year's national grade 6 assessment, the ministry has continued its maths camps with saw grade 6 pupils attending classes from 9 hours to 12 hours on Saturdays. The initiative is geared at improving performance in the subject area. Parents and teachers had also raised concerns about the curriculum not being completed on time, a fault the sessions will make up for. Region 4 Education Officer Sharius Ad Atkinson cited parents' improved involvement and support for the initiative. It's well received by the parents. Most parents are um, cooperating with us to send their children to the math camp. The sessions are being offered at no cost and therefore are not to be misconstrued for extra lessons. The initiative is expected to see math coordinators and monitors organizing and being actively involved in this exercise along with teachers from various schools. Math monitor Narpati Mohammed said the children are benefiting from the camp. They come because they enjoy it, they come because they're learning more. They get individual attention on Saturdays. The program entails training for teachers in content and methodology for efficient delivery, with over 1,000 teachers being trained in this regard. Many of our teachers are working assiduously to ensure that we actually see um, an improvement in, in terms of our performance when compared to last year. Last year, the mathematics intervention saw the ministry recording a 46% pass rate in the area of mathematics. This came on the heels of a daunting pass rate of 14% from the previous year. The 2019 sitting of the NGSA is slated for April 17 and 18. Leticia Isaacs for InfoHub. The launch of Guyana's first prostate cancer network foundation has signaled a call for men to start a conversation about the disease. James Courtney Butter's Prostate Cancer Awareness Network founder, Dwayne, explained that men, particularly those of African descent, are most likely to be diagnosed with prostate cancer at the age of 40 or after, hence the decision to launch a foundation on his 40th birthday. It is named after his father James who was diagnosed at age 47 with the disease 16 years ago. This has encouraged me to think about how best my father's story can be told and to raise awareness among the men in Guyana as it relates to prostate cancer and not only prostate cancer but men's health. The foundation is partnering with the Ministry of Public Health's Men's Health Department whose coordinator Dr. Dennis Pasir shared some statistics. For the period of 2003 to 2012 there were a total of 865 diagnosed cases for a cumulative incidence of 115 per 100,000 of our population. Now these figures are quite alarming considering that prostate cancer can be prevented by simple lifestyle changes and early detection and treatment. Therefore, on behalf of the Ministry of Public Health, the Men's Health Unit, I greatly applaud this effort by Mr. Butters and team and do look forward to working together with them on any endeavors that is geared towards the betterment of our men and boys in our country. A true survivor, James Courtney Butters, resides in Atlanta, USA. He's currently on dialysis after his kidneys failed nine years ago. Butters was also treated for colon cancer in 2015 and fitted with a pacemaker in 2018. I wish I could have been there. You know. But um, I, I just want y'all to, just, I just want to encourage y'all that this we are doing is one of the best things that I, I, I think you could do. And I try to do the same thing here among my friends and family. I tell them all about you know, my experience and also Try to, try to get them to go test themselves. November will mark the start of a month of activities to raise awareness for prostate cancer. This will include walks, rides, discussions, radio print and social media campaigns. Interested persons can contact Dwayne Butters on telephone numbers in Guyana 687-6911 or Canada 647-901-4884. The Men's Health Department can be contacted on 223
And remember, if you're a male over 40, you owe it to yourself and your family to get your prostate checked. From Hartburnston Lodge, Paul McAdam for InfoHub. That's all for this evening. Connect with us on WhatsApp, like and subscribe to our Facebook page for notifications, and subscribe to our website for more stories. You can also follow us on Instagram for updates. Your bridge and weather reports are up next. Goodbye.